There is more than one way to improve testability in legacy code. In a previous video, I demonstrated a technique, adapt parameter, and today I'm gonna to use the same code example, but to show a different technique. Replace supplier with supplies. The purpose is the same though, make the code easier to unit test. Hi, I'm Emily Bates. I'm a software developer and creator of Salman Coaching. As a concept, legacy code has several definitions. And one I heard recently that I quite like was from Steve Smith on the Modern Software Engineering channel. Check it out later. He was quoting Ollie Shaw. A legacy system is any software system with a high cost of business change. So as demand for business change increases, it can't respond quickly and safely. I like the way that this definition puts the focus on the needs of the business. Because when you're refactoring, it's important to keep in mind that beautiful code is not an end in itself. In legacy systems, often we are refactoring in order to make the design more easily testable because a design that has tests is gonna be faster and cheaper to change and you can lower that cost of business change. This technique that I'm gonna to show today, replace supplier with supplies, it's very useful when you're dealing with a type that's awkward to use in a unit test for some reason. I originally learned this technique from G. Paul Hill and I'll put a link to his article in the show notes but I think it's easiest to explain by showing you in the code. I've got some example code here that I'm going to use to show a technique for handling legacy code, replace supplier with supplies. I've showed this one before actually, when I was showing you the technique adapt parameter. Now it's this print summary method. Basically this first parameter here, flowchart diagram, it's a very awkward type. I've got the implementation of it over here. I mean, this is a, an exercise, so this um, implementation isn't, isn't realistic, of course, it's just throwing an exception on every method. I'm trying to get you to understand that you can't have one of these in a unit test. So we need an alternative. Replace it with something that we, we can have in a unit test that will enable us to test this functionality. So the thing we need to do basically is work out, well, how are we using the diagram and could we replace it with the things it's supplying? So here we've got four calls to different methods on the diagram and each one is supplying something that we need in order to create this diagram summary. So let's just go and have a look at each one of those. So name is returning a string, serial number also returning a string, summary information also a string, flowchart thumbnail, now that's a PNG document. I'm going through these basically to check that all these return values, these supplies, are things that I could have in my unit test. So I need to just check whether this is one of them. So let's go over and look at PNG document. Turns out this one is fine. It's, it's quite a simple little class. In reality, of course, it might be more complicated, but that's all I need to know. This is okay to have in a unit test. So basically what I'm gonna do now is um, create local variables for each of those supplies. So um, I'm just using the um, refactoring here, introduce variable, which is thoroughly automated and safe with the, uh, the tools that I've got here. So four new variables and that change shouldn't actually introduce any errors at all. And I have to be careful here because I'm doing these refactorings when I don't have any tests. So I've got to be really conservative, but introduce variable is one I'm happy to do. The next refactoring on the other hand, I might want to double check this is going to be all right. Because what I'm going to do basically is slide statement to change the order of these statements. So I'm putting together all of these four supplies all these things that I need in order to create this diagram summary into a section before I go and create the summary. So by sliding these statements I've done a split phase refactoring. I'm going to do all of these before I do all of that. And sometimes that can be a problem. In this case though it's absolutely fine. Um, it's an exercise and I've decided it's okay but you might need to check that. So anyway those changes um, the code still compiles um, I do have some tests, but they're not much good, so maybe I won't worry about them. But it's the next part that's interesting. I've, I've isolated the, the supplies that my functionality needs, and I'm looking at this and thinking, well, I could even put them before the, I can't put them before the null check, actually, because I want to make sure this diagram is not null before I do this. But I could uh, extract this part, basically, into a method. So, so let's try doing that. Extract method is another one of those refactorings that I think is safe to do with, with tools when you're working in legacy code without tests. 
So it's suggesting to me a new method here. So let's just have a look at the interface here. So it's got this out variable for the summary text um, and the language, and those were both um, parameters of the original method, and then these four new parameters. I'm looking at this and thinking, actually, I would prefer it. Instead of returning void, I'd prefer it to use this summary text as the return value. So I'm just going to do another little refactoring that will, will help that to happen. If I introduce another variable just for the, um, the, um, the actual exported summary, that uh, enables me to now have a block of code here that when I extract this bit as a method, it gets the signature closer to what I want. So I've got a return type now, the exported summary, which is a string. And exported summary isn't quite the name I want for this method. I want to create a diagram summary. That's what this does. New diagram summary. The next thing I want to do is just check that order of my um, parameters. I think I want to put the language after the supplies because I've got the diagram here in the argument list before as well. So just a small little thing. I don't need it to be static. I'd like it to be internal so that my test can access it later. So there we go. I've got a, a new testable method. All of the types in the signature for this are suitable to use in a unit test. And this is the main functionality that I might want to test when I was testing this method. After this, it's all just a bit of cleanup. I could probably inline that variable. I could probably inline these variables. Um, and then this line starts to get a bit long, though. Um, and I start to think, well, maybe this method's got a few too many arguments. Actually, maybe I could gather them together into a new class. So I don't, st strictly speaking, need to do this when there's four of them. But if you've got a, a lot of supplies, this might be a good idea. So the refactoring I want here is transform parameters. So I'm just going to make sure I've got selected the, the four supplies that I've got from the, the diagram. It's uh, those, those first four arguments of this method. And then I need to give it a class name. So again, I'm thinking about, well, what is the, the role of this class in this context? Well, it's the, it's the diagram supplies um, for creating the diagram summary. So uh, what I call this diagram summary data. And it will just go and create that class for me. And then if I want, I can put this on its own line there and make this line much more easy to read. But basically, the technique here is that you're, you've got an awkward parameter that all you're doing is grabbing stuff out of it. You're, it's supplying you with things. And all the things it's supplying individually would be fine to have in a unit test. So you replace the supplier with the supplies in an extracted method that you can then test and get a, a test for this functionality. I hope that demo has made it clear what I'm talking about. So replace supplier with supplies can easily open up for additional improvements in your design afterwards. Because if you create this new class for those supplies, initially it's just a simple record with, with some properties. But once you've named that concept and created a class for it, you might start to think differently and realize that what you've discovered here is actually an entity in your domain that's been missing from your model previously. And you might discover methods that you can move to it so it starts to take on responsibilities for managing the data that it contains. I guess it's another example of that deep relationship between testability and good design. Unfortunately, you can't always do this. You can't always replace a supplier with its supplies. And there are probably about three main reasons. The types of the supplies could be just as awkward to use in the test as the original. Or you might actually be updating the supplies during the method, and it's problematic to return those updates to the supplier. You'd be breaking encapsulation. Or the problem can come in that split phase where you're sliding some of the statements to gather all of those supplies together. Sometimes the, the creation of those supplies needs to be interleaved with the rest of the code, and you can't split them out like that. In any case, it's still a very useful technique in many situations. So I suggest you go and get the code for the exercise and try it out, get comfortable with all the steps, so that if you do spot a good opportunity to use this in your legacy code, you'll be able to do this refactoring smoothly and safely and with all the tools. 
If you'd like to learn more techniques for better code design and better refactoring, there are lots of resources and trainings on offer. As well as all the freely available practice code repos on my GitHub, I recommend you head over to the Saman Technical Coaching Society website. I share a lot of things there. Of course, I also have a Patreon and members of my Patreon get access to additional resources. And of course, I just want to thank my Patreon members for all of their support. It does make a real difference to me. Happy coding.